All right. Hey, guys, this is Chelsea with Hennapreneur, and I'm super excited. Today, I've got Risa with me. She is the owner of Henna Trinidad. And tell me if that's not crazy. Tell me if that's not amazing. Risa, tell us about yourself and um, a little bit about your business. All right, great. So, Chelsea, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I mean, what you do is fantastic. So, uh, on behalf of the local and regional and Henna community here in Trinidad and the entire Caribbean, I mean, thank you so much for all the great work that you've been doing. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And um, I've been following you for quite some time and uh, the, the stuff that you do, I mean, your level of dedication is 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 amazing. So thank you so much. Um, okay, so my name is Risa Raghunanan Mohammed. I am a local here in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, we're from the tropics, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm bringing some nice sunshine and beach and nice vibes to you. And um, Kenna Trinidad was created in 2008. Uh, after I realized that um, the there was little to no uh, products available for henna artists to uh, get their hands on, supply their trade. And what we did have was, at best, questionable. Um, there were products that were branded really weirdly. They had like um, they were in Hindi, and most of them didn't have a manufacturing or expiry date. And it was kind of like a hit or miss. So it's only when you open the bag when you realize, well, okay, yeah, I got that kind of powder. I'm like, oh, no, what is this? You know? So, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So I started off my journey. Um, basically, I had no, no capital, no investment. So I had my full-time job. And when I got paid, I used to use that same money, at least most of it, and it started bringing down products from the U.S. So um, I, I used to, to, to apply my trade, like, you know, very small. And my first sale was in 2008 in October. And someone came and asked me, they were like, oh, would you be willing to sell, sell me some of your, your henna poles? So I told them, I said, mm, yeah, no problem. I don't see why not. And um, I, I delivered to her and everything. And I did a nice little bell and stuff. And, um, you know, it, it was like, you know, thing, idea. Okay, all right. Um, and I, I started doing it again, and someone else came and asked me. They said, you know, hey, I know you you, you sold phones to so-and-so just recently. Um, can I get some from you? And I was like, yeah, no problem. That's sure. And, um, you know, it started going like that. And then someone came and asked me for henna powder. And, uh, I mean, it, it was kind of expensive to bring it down because, remember, we're bringing it. Um, how Trinidad works. Uh, we have to take the items from you guys and then ship it to our skybox in Florida. So you're paying for the product plus shipping. And then we have to pay for shipping from Florida to Trinidad. And then when it gets here, we have um, customs tax, um, VAT, which is value added tax. And also too, there's a new import tax called a 7% online tax. So oh, by the wow. time, yeah, so by the time it is that a product lands here, um, the prices may be doubled. So um, we have a lot of taxes, but don't lie. Uh, why it is that we <laughs> but, uh, by the time it is that it gets down here for me to have to make a, even a smallest markup it's going to be pretty tough for a hen artist to actually purchase a pack of powder so what I did I started to do my research and I started to look for suppliers and of course you know as with looking for suppliers it's either hit or miss as well too and um, you know 10, 10 going on 11 years later here I am I have a good bit of suppliers from all over uh, for the first time in, a, in maybe never, uh, Trinidad and the Caribbean has actually had the opportunity. Um, actually, they have been they have been given um, yeah the opportunity to actually be able to get products such as Moroccan henna powder, Jamila henna powder, essential oils such as the Kaji Patan, you know, the, the pure lavender and stuff, and. They've never had this 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 opportunity before. They've never had these products and supplies at their fingertips at really good prices. So mm -hmm. that's the main focus with my business in the sense that it's not just to have the products, but also to afford to have them at affordable prices. And we have like we've grown with regards to not just offering henna for body art, but we do henna for the hair as well. So I mean, you know about that. Yes. And, um, yeah, we have different Ayurvedic powders that we also. Um, offer um i've actually uh dived into having the shea powder uh from chad and uh, that has been selling like hot bread 
And, you know, we, how it is that I find my trade is that, you know, I partner with other henna artists and I help them, you know, basically get their footing in the henna community lo locally. And they, they make a name for themselves by using my name. So the brand Henna Trinidad has become synonymous with Henna and Mehindi in Trinidad and also the Caribbean. And it's been a long, long, treacherous, hard uphill journey. I wouldn't lie, Chelsea, but it's, it's, it has been worth it. And to be here with you now today, I mean, this is part of my reward as well, too. So, I mean, I feel, according, this is the training slang, right? I feel like a bite up chilling. I feel so honored and so blessed <laughs> to be here. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, your journey. So I have to tell you, like when I saw your application, I was like, she is phenomenal. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like for you to take this, this problem that you know was a problem in your industry. Cause it started as a problem for you. Like you're like, I just want to apply my trade and I can't, it's becoming costly. And for them, for you to solve the problem, not only for yourself, but for everyone else around you, that's incredible. Like, it's incredible from, a, like, obviously, a all ships rise, on high tides, that whole, like, nice whatever thing. But that's incredible from a business perspective. Mm -hmm. I was like, she knows what she's doing. And that yeah. is amazing. So let me, let me ask you, what was your first, like, what's your first memory with Hedda? What, what, um, what was the first time that you experienced Hedda? Oh, this, this is, um, yes, 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 I'll go. Uh, I was actually in high school. I was about maybe 14 or 15. And you see the same design that you have on your hand there. I saw oh. my artist, my henna, but actually my art teacher. She is from India. Her name is Charu Sharma. So um, Miss Sharma came to school and she had these beautiful markings on her hands and she was washing her hands. And I'm there like, wait, how she is washing her hands and the, the design is not coming off. It's pretty, but it's not coming off because, you know, we used to use pen and marker and scribble on paper and all on our hands and anywhere free mark up all on the desks and stuff you know i know i'm not supposed to be defacing pro public property but yes you know <laughs> come on <laughs> never scribble or something on somebody i may have done it i may have done it <laughs> i cannot confirm or deny <laughs> <laughs> but we're all guilty of it sometimes trust me it's a little flower so but um I, I saw these markings on her hands and I mean, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very upfront, bold person. I, I, I'm not, I don't consider myself to be shy. And I went to her and I asked Ms. Sharma, what is that on your hand? Because you're washing your hands and it's not coming off. And she's like, oh, this is henna. I'm like, what is that? And she introduced me to it. And what she did is that she told me, she said, visit a local um, Indian store. We call them locally puja stores. And she told me, she said, visit a puja store and see if you can get your hands on some henna powder and bring it. Um, to school and I'll show you what to do. So I did that. I got like one of these little small, I think it was a Neha brand or something. It was one of those really, I'm talking about like maybe 18 years of Yeah. And I carried the pack to school. Of course, I made my mom, you know, uh, go to the puja store after leaving school that evening and we got the pack of the henna powder and I came the next day and I told her, said, here's the powder and she took it and she said, okay. She took some water and she mixed the powder in a little cup. And then she covered it and she said, okay, come back tomorrow and I'll show you what to do. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I came back the next day and she fashioned a cone out of some cellar wrap. And then she took a spoon and she dolloped the paste inside the cone and she closed it up. And she said, give me your hand. So I'm like, you know. <laughs> she did a beautiful little mandala on the inside of my hand. And then she covered the tips of my fingers and she told me, she said, okay, leave it. And when you reach home, you're going to take it and scrape it off and you'll tell me, tell me what you think. So I said, okay. So imagine you're in high school. You have one hand with Hannah and obviously the next hand to write with. So I'm like this during the whole of school. During, <laughs> I'm not doing anything with my left hand. So obviously my right hand has to do everything. And I remain there and everybody, I mean, everybody in school knew about Hannah. And I'm like, how come I'm the only fool who don't know about Hannah? <laughs> hey, where did you get your Hannah done? And I'm like, oh my God. So, how do you even know what this is? <laughs> I know, I'm mind blown, right? So, and I scraped it off and I looked at my hand and I'm like, but this is orange, this is not what she has on her hand. So I was completely, I mean like, I was so disappointed. So I went to sleep and when I got up the next morning and I'm like, whoa, you know? So it has been a, 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 a love story since then. I have been deeply involved with it and that memory is forever etched in my mind. That was my very first encounter with Hannah. Oh, and wow. from there, yeah. 
Wow. So Miss Sharma, she gets the, all the credit. For yeah, she gets 100% credit for introducing me to it because if it wasn't for her, I would have never known about Hannah and it would be where I am today. Oh, I love that. I love it. So like, how did you end up getting started within your business? Was it that like you then started playing with Hannah and then it just grew or what took you to from from trying Hannah for the first time to all of a sudden you have a studio and clients and like, what was that journey like? Oh, this is this is a funny story. Um, I remember when I, I was still in high school and my aunt, uh, she enrolled me in a pageant <laughs> um, around Diwali time. It's a Diwali queen pageant. I, yeah, I can't believe I actually enrolled in them. <laughs> and I took part. The very first one I took part, I won it. Huh? I won. I was Miss Diwali queen that year. So, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to a local puja store and I had one of the girls do my hands for just the inside of both hands. And uh, I mean, the, the, the skin and everything was wonderful. Of course, she used the chemical cone, but you know, we didn't know about that back in the time, back in the day. That's like about me, like I said, about 16, 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she did my hands, I, I love the color, but the design was not something that I was, I was happy with. And oh. I said, you know what? I'm not going to let anybody do my hands again for me ever again. I was a little disappointed, but pain <laughs> was awesome, obviously, because, you know, it's one of those bright red colors. But the design itself, you know, I could have done with a little bit of preference. And I vowed to myself, you know what? I will not let anybody do my henna ever again for me. And I need to start back doing this thing because if she can sit here and she could do this and she could get money for it, hey, who am I? So, <laughs> um, and I, I started back. I actually went dormant for a, a couple of years because um, we had exams and stuff that we were going to do. Uh -huh. And uh, when I got back into the field, um, of course, I mean, I, I, I will be honest, I did dabble with the chemical cones at the beginning, you know, the cones that we got from India, because that was what was available to us. And that's how it is that henna train that came about. Yeah. And I would do henna for all my friends and for my family and members absolutely free. And then my dad um, when it is that he was alive, God rest his soul, uh, he was the one who came and he told me, he said, Risa, come here, sit down, listen. Um, you're using my money to do this, right? So if you want, at least charge a little something um, so that you can cover the cost of your materials. That's all, you don't have to charge a pound and a crown. So I said, okay. And Chelsea, when I started charging, I lost, I'm not joking and I'm not exaggerating, I lost all my clients, all, every <sighs> Nobody wanted to pay for it. You know and how it goes. I know. And uh. you know what? So what it is that I started charging? I started charging 5 TT, which is the equivalent of less than 1 US dollar. That's how much I started charging. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody wow. wanted to pay that. <laughs> wow. So hard. Um, but my dad told me, he said, you know what? Don't give up. Just keep on doing what you said you're doing. Keep practicing. Keep taking your pictures. And my sister-in-law, uh, she actually helped me out. She bought me uh, one of my very first official brides who, um, who did from elbows come down. And that took me almost eight hours to do because, you know, when you're now starting off and you're now dipping your feet and getting your feet wet into the, um, into the henna world, to do a bride for the very first time is going to take you hell along than normal. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And my cousin, who I grew up with, she was my ex she was my very first client, who I took pictures of, and she was the one whose hands went up on Facebook and started, you know, the viral trend of me being a, a local henna artist, and that's what really kind of carried my career forward. So it's not just Miss Shara Sharma, but it's actually one of my really good cousins. Her name is Ria. So I'm going to tag her in the post when it is that we start to share this all over. So Ria, thank you so much. I'm going to tag you. Oh, you want <laughs> I love that. I love it. So it's, I love that it's all tied to like you have these memories. I love when there's those memories, those rich memories that yeah. accompany the story because, you know, it's part of your journey and it's funny how yeah. it colors and it informs the rest of your path. So, oh, that is so fun. Yeah, thank you, Ria. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, tell me, what is, like, what is your typical work day look like? Like, now, for Henna Trinidad, what is that, what does that look like um, for you? Um, well, okay. Given, no, I, I don't mean to toot my own horn or to brag, but Henna Trinidad is maybe the one place that most, if not all, Henna artists would come to with regards to purchasing their materials and supplies. 
And I mean, of course, you will know about uh, all people, you know, what is in the air right now. It's Ramadan time. And uh, um, all our Muslim sisters are looking to book their appointments and to get their henna cones, um, you know, ordered and, and ready for when it is that, you know, Eid is going to come up. Um, I think it's supposed to be around the 5th of June, inshallah. It's supposed to be around that time. Right. And uh, when... When that what what happens is that every single day we act, I actually have a lot of clients calling. Um, if it's not a peak period, if you want to call it that, uh, a peak period for us in Trinidad would be like Eid time, and then we have another event for, um, coming up on the thirtieth of May called Indian Arrival Day, and we have obviously you know Diwali um, celebrated by our Hindu Muslim uh, Hindu brothers and sisters, and. Um, Eid is one of our very popular times to have a lot of uh, our products moving. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's not a peak period, most of our clients would be um, to purchase uh, henna for their hair and other Ayurvedic powders also for their hair and for their skin. So typically my day, my official henna train that day would start at 9 o'clock in the morning and then finish, um, I guess, I guess one to that I close my eyes to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, relatable. Yeah. I have a lot of inquiries. A lot of people have been wanting to to make the transition back. And remember, when I, I, I always say transition back because that's where the henna started with regard to coloring in your hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people have been transitioning also to go back to their natural, you know, hair care regimes. And this is what it is that we offer. We just don't offer the products. We offer, we offer advice as well too. And we work with clients in order for them to be able to bring back their hair to that nice, rich, vibrant you know feel and texture and and and, and strength and color and everything mm -hmm. so most of my clients during the off or peak season uh would be for henna and hair treatment and henna and, henna and hair coloring um as well as ayurvedic treatments for your hair and for your skin but right now we have um the paste is now starting to pick up with regards to people ordering henna cones for in the, in time for eating so uh, you have people starting to secure their, their orders because, you know, we always offer something. Um, you know, we always offer a little extra something if it is that you place your order early. But in Trinidad, we have a, a, a good bit of, you know, sayings and a good bit of slangs and part local parlance. And we always say, Trini people like to wait until last minute to do things. Yeah. <laughs> and exactly what it is that I've always been bracing myself for every single year without fail, Chelsea, every single year. You would find people calling. Do you have any phones that we could come and we could purchase today? So I always make sure that coming on closer to eat, I always have at least 50 extra henna cones just in case you <laughs> are coming who don't place their orders. Oh so, my yeah. God. <laughs> so it, it's more about I'm, I'm a stay at home mom. Uh, henna Trinidad is my full time job. I took up Henna Trinidad as a full time job in 2013. Yeah, 2013 was when it is that I took it up full time. Mm -hmm. I had a marvelous full-time job. Before that, I had insurance and I had perks and discounts and everything, you name it. And my son had to start school. And um, my employers, they were not very happy with the fact that I was asking for, um, for flexi time. Mm. For me to be able to drop him to school and pick him back up. I mean, you would, you would understand, you know, how hard it is. You know, you have to, when you have kids, you know, your life revolves around them. And that's about it. Yeah. And um, to balance, you know, having a, a child and having a, a sideline job and having your main job as well, too, it was really tough. And we had to get somebody to drop him and pick him back up. So I told my husband, I said, listen, I'm going to buy the bullet. Let me leave my job and let me see what I can do with, with regards to my sideline job work, which was Hannah Trinidad. And I think I, I want to believe I made the right choice because I love being self-employed. I love, you know, working my own hours. Be my own boss. If it is that I lose, I'm, I'm the only person that's losing. If it is that I profit, yeah, yeah I'm the only person that's profiting. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It would be nice, you know, to, to have to know that it was a it was a huge sacrifice. I would not like it was a huge sacrifice to have to let go all these different things and, you know, say, you know what, let me try something with my business. Let me see what I can do. And I, I think, I mean, with everything, you know, you always make some, some, bad decisions and um well obviously you know you make some good decisions as well but i think the bad decisions are what made me the person that i am today because 
with all those bad decisions, obviously, I wouldn't know what would have been the right decision. Mm-hmm. You know, if you understand what I mean. And um, I think I've done pretty well, and I deserve a little feedback after that. And <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, yeah. like from the outside looking in, I'm like, yes, you made the right decision. <laughs> like you, you built this empire, which is amazing because you're servicing not only your country, but you have also the region, the whole Caribbean region mm-hmm. that you mm-hmm. can service, and it's like under your under your your wing under your spell almost it's like you <laughs> solve a huge problem for them and that's that's phenomenal so you know what so through Hannah Trinidad because of course you've got the retail side and yeah. then you are offering you know now these beauty treatments also with the Ayurvedic um, skincare hair care and so forth and then you're taking henna clients is this only you working do you have a team like what is that all right so I am I am basically the the, the mother of Hannah Trinidad um, my my team uh, would consist of maybe about 16 to 17 other henna artists. They have been instrumental in making tr- henna Trinidad what it is to be. And mm-hmm. these, this, this team is made up of one guy and all the rest are females. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have to shout them out. So to my, my brother in partner in crime with regards to henna, Rajiv. Um, Rajiv has been my rock, honestly, and he has been so amazing. And you know, a couple of them, and I, I, I know for a fact that I couldn't have done it, with, done, done this without them. It's like Amanda and Yogita and Ria and you know Annalie and Sushmita, Shazana, all of them. I mean, I don't want to call everybody's name, but I mean, these girls, they make, they make the Hannah Trinidad team. What we've done is that we have actually partnered together. Now, they're not financial members of Henna Trinidad, mm-hmm. but they're instrumental in the sense that when we go to an event, we, a lot of people hear the name team and they always think, you know, well, oh, it's just a group of people. Mm-hmm. But this team that we have, Chelsea, it's not just a team, it's a family. I mean, when we go to an event, I don't have to tell anybody what to do at all. These girls, when I say girl, I mean, I am, I'm involved in Rajiv and this too, right? <laughs> this group, they know exactly what they need to do. They know exactly what it is um, is required of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, we work in sync. We don't try to overpower anybody or try to make anybody look bad or anything. Nothing like that. This is, this, this is the epitome of what you would call a team. And I am so proud, actually, to say, you know, well, this this is my team. This is our team. And it's about 16 or 17 henna artists. Um, when we go to events, not everybody will be there for all the events. So whoever is able to make it, you know, they come. We have our nice little henna trainer polos with our little logo and stuff that we would brand. And um, it's all about, you know, teamwork and effort and also a, a major part of my, my business, something that I have invested a lot of time and effort into is professionalism. And when it comes to interacting with clients, I mean, everybody would know customer service is at the top. There's nothing else that could that that could come above that. And that is key because remember, in our business, in our line of business, this is a service that we're providing. It's not mm. just a product alone. And if it is that you don't know how to interact with your clients, if you don't know how to keep your client, well, then you're not you're not going to be success, successful. That's the thing. Right. Yeah. So I mean, Hannah it's it's a it's a big group. I am I'm the main the the, the head lead henna artist but when we sit down as a team you'll never be able to tell who is the lead henna artist because everybody's always same playing play, play field same level everybody i treat everybody equally nobody gets any special any special um treatment or anything we're, we're, we're one group we're one team oh my god i love that you know what that's it's that comes down to like pure leadership like i i hear what you're saying like this is our team and I respect that. And I like, I want to say I respect that hundred percent, but it takes a freaking strong leader to be able to create a team of almost 20 women, like just managing the personalities alone. Not <laughs> even, yeah, like forget the logistics of work. <laughs> yeah. Like just the personalities before you get into like the clients and the money and the, the, the opportunity for things to go wrong. And, and, um, yeah. uh, like even like, because sometimes we're like like sibling rivalry sort of thing. like yeah. even those things not accounting for any of that yet like that takes a strong leader so yeah. you have like I tip my hat to you ma'am because that- well, I, I will be honest you know we've, we've had our share fair share of you know maybe fallouts and disagreements and stuff but at the end of the day 
we always resolve it. Strange enough, we always resolve it. We always get over this hill. And the most important thing, we learn from it. That's the big thing. From all of our experiences, we've learned from every single one of them. Yeah. So does the team mostly work at like events or do you, are you hosting events at the studio? Or are you guys going out to events or do you guys have like clients that are coming in to see you? What is the, what does it look like as far as the workspace and how that's set up? All right. So currently where I work out of, it's not an actual studio. What we've done is that my husband and I, we have dubbed it as a showroom. So there's, there's not much space when it comes to having clients come and, you know, like sit down and you know have we actually have like an actual studio um vibe but uh we try to make our space as accommodating as possible and what we did um on the 5th of may we recently had a very first event that was never um that was never done at all anything close to it in trinidad we had something you know they have like the sip and paint and stuff we had our very first sip and henna event there that and sounds fun Oh, uh, yeah. and because we had like almost 30 people, we decided to keep it small because this is our very first event and uh, it was amazing. I mean, the feedback that we got from everybody, do you know what was the only bad thing that everybody complained about? That it was too short. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so you're definitely doing that again. Yeah. We, everybody had a wonderful time. Um, It was it was inspirational. We had a couple of interviews as well too. Um, it was, uh, it was actually, it was a platform that we, 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 I, I had a vision to not just for people to come and have their henna done, but for them to come and learn. And we had a trivia, um, little game, a trivia game that we hosted. And there were questions, you know, that we asked. The, the participants who were taking part in the actual trivia game and when we were completed you know i asked everybody so did anybody learn anything and they were like yeah we did we didn't even know this we didn't even know that we didn't know about ppd we didn't know about you know this this desensitization of the skin when did they come in to use the chemical phones and stuff so my my dream came true on may the 5th where it is that we brought um, at least some of the henna artists locally together, not just henna artists, but we dubbed the event for henna enthusiasts. So we didn't want people to think that it's just henna artists alone who are allowed to come to the event. Once you love henna, once you have a, a deep appreciation and a um, passion for the henna arts, that's where it is that you would want to be. And everybody who came to the event said that they thoroughly enjoyed themselves. They had a whale of a time. We had loads of sponsors, loads of prizes as well to and we have another event coming up on the 28th of July. We're actually moving it to a different area of Trinidad so that the participants who were unable to make it because of the location, we are moving it to different places in Trinidad so that people will have an opportunity to come and be part of the event as well too. So if anybody's listening to our interview now, locally we're having another event on Sunday the 28th of July. It's going to be down at San Fernando to so look out for more information on it. I love that. I, yeah. you know, I like how you, you how you position this. It's not just like, oh, hey, henna artists, come out and do a thing with them. But any henna enthusiast, like even just that little shift. Yeah. And that, that widens the whole thing. I love that so much. So, Risa, how long did it take you to get from just starting to where you are today? Like... Did you experience a a period of time within your within your professional journey that like there was a catalyst? Like I can I can acknowledge that there's a year there are a period of like two years within my journey that who there was a ton of growth there. Did you have an experience like that? What was that like for you? Um, my my period for 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 this 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 growth split right now. Um, it came about maybe about two to three years ago, mm. and it's still happening right now. Um, when, when I think that's, it, it really, this whole thing catapulted for me when it is that I had my very first TV interview, my local TV interview. And from there, that's when it is that thing started to kind of, you know, move really fast. And, um, I know it is that you were asking me just now, you know, how it is that the team moves, what they do. Uh, we have events, um, that take place throughout the entire year locally. And what we do is that we try to be as, to try to be at as much events as we possibly can where henna would fit in. And I mean, uh, we, we, 
Hannah Trinidad has been trying to change the outlook on Hannah uh, locally because a lot of people believe that Hannah it's really for um, when Hindu brides are getting married. So it's a stigma mm. that it's attached to locally. So everybody thinks in Trinidad once it is you have Hannah on your hand or that you're Hindu and that you know it's either you're going to get married or you got married or something. But you know we've moved away from that and we've shown people that it's not just for Hindus alone. It's not it's not a Hindu thing and it's more of a traditional cultural thing and people wear henna now as you know just as do as they would wear like rings and chains and stuff because it's a it's it's it serves the same purpose as does jewelry you know it's to beautify the body to enhance the skin you know to make yourself look even prettier and this is where it is that we have been trying to involve ourselves in different events right throughout Trinidad and Tobago and there are little pop-up shops, little markets, little fairs and bazaars that we would go to and we would go and we would market ourselves as henna artists, market the products that we sell that, that tie in together with henna Trinidad and what we've done is that last year we've started some really, um, some really, some really stern, um, what's the word I'm looking for boy? Um, We've, we, we've, we've hit the ground running with regards to uh, educate any public about using chemical cones, about using, you know, the instant quick dry, mm-hmm. you know, the plain henna cones. And um, we've, we've, I think we've, we, I've, I, ha- I can say safely that we've made a dent right now because people are now starting to get information, now starting to get wind of it. And mm-hmm. it's only because it is that we have started this campaign to let people know, hey, what you guys are buying, what you guys are using, it's not safe. And we've given them the option of using something safe. We've given out tons of flyers. Uh, the, our our biggest event for the year is actually uh, an event that is for nine days um, leading up to Diwali. So it's an event that they call the Diwali Nagar. And the Diwali Nagar, the words actually mean the city of lights. Uh-huh. And it's an event, it's a nine day event. And it's becoming, slowly becoming commercial, commercialized, uh, sad to say. But uh, it's all about, you know, diving into the Indian culture. And, you know, there are a lot of people who come and exhibit a lot of, you know, Hindu and Indian cultural stuff with regards to clothes and food and, you know, um, different things. And it's been changing because uh, you you find that at the event now you're, you're seeing, um, uh, big, big um, corporate sponsors coming in, and you know you're seeing brand new cars on exhibit and stuff, and you know you're starting to lose the touch of the event. But nevertheless, uh, we mm. have been at the event. This year is going to make it our tenth year at the Diwali Nagar, and we have a huge booth. It's a twenty by twenty booth. We fully air conditioned the booth, and we have team members from our group at the event. And what we do is that we set up little little um, stations in our booth to do henna on the spot. And uh, when people come to the Diwali Nagar, when they visit, they come for three main things. Food, clothes, and henna. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, it! Yeah, so this is one of our main biggest events. And when people come to that event, that is where it is that we... We, we try to do as much advertising as possible. We try to do as much educating as possible. And, um, you know, we, we, we've really set out with regards to educating people about the dangers of using chemical cones, the black henna, and then, you know, enlightening them about, you know, how they can use natural henna, the benefits of using natural henna, the alternatives to using the, 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 the traditional um, henna cones like the jaguar cones and stuff. So I think, you know, what we're doing is that we're actually finally getting somewhere where it is that we are. And because of, you know, this event that takes place in Trinidad around Diwali time, because of my investment in the event, I think that's why it is that for the past three years, things have been going really far. And what mm-hmm. some promptings have, have done those TV interviews back in 2016, that is where it is that things started to, you know, but people started, you know, going to study here. You talk to people about it. Do you know Henna Trinidad? Oh, yeah, we know about them. And, mm-hmm. you know, before that, that TV interview, people, people didn't know about Henna Trinidad. Right. And because, you know, because of the opportunities that were extended to me and I used them properly, I, I, I know to myself I didn't exploit them. And yeah. I used it to the sense where it is that 
yes, I used it to advertise my business, but I also used it as a platform to educate people about, you know, natural henna and the benefits and then the dangers of using the chemical phones and stuff. So it my 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 according to you, my catalyst it has not ended as yet. It's still going because there are a lot of opportunities that are presenting themselves and I'm using them wisely. And um I'm actually happy to say that this is the very first year that um we have something regionally called the Caribbean Beauty Awards. And the Caribbean Beauty Awards is a platform where um people in the beauty industry are um recognized for their um amazing work by being nominated and of course they have a panel of judges who will judge the criteria and then choose each person for each category and mm -hmm. for the very first time this is the very first year um we are henna trainer is proud to be the sponsor of the very first ever category henna artist of the year that so, is amazing yeah i mean i'm sorry i can't even i can't even um <laughs> nominate myself but <laughs> I'm happy about you're the sponsor you get to like uh, that's 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 known you've got all the credibility I yeah. love that Risa you are like oh my gosh you know you know sometimes you you talk to someone and like that person knows their stuff like you know your stuff hearing the 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 steps that you're taking the the strategic moves that that you're and I hear you saying and I feel like this is you also being quite humble and saying like, oh, well, there was this TV interview and then things got really big. And the truth is you would have had to have earned that TV interview to begin with. You know what I mean? So like, even that, that's not by chance. It's not like, oh, I'm a henna artist and I want to go big. I just need to book a TV interview. Like, that's not how it works. You had to work to get there first. Yeah. So you, oh my gosh, I love this so, so much. <laughs> so, you know what? I want to know. So because I think that it's so important for us. There's two things that I want to do. First, I think it's important for us as professionals to know, accept, understand our responsibility as educators for the community. And the second is that I think that it's so valuable for us to continue to always, um, for our primary goal to be to enrich the community with education rather than just pushing for the sale. Because ultimately, the informed consumer will buy the right product. And if you have the right product, then you win, right? And you're not salesy in the process. So you, you did that. And like you're the perfect example of, of why I think that works best. But I have, a, I have a little bit of a thought. You mentioned that, you know, the henna artist, the, the community there, like the, the station, if you will, of the henna artist is a little bit different. Have you found one in Trinidad? Is there is there um, is there stigma around being a henna artist? And as an educator, did you also find that like any so this is a double whammy? But <laughs> in that within that stigma, if that exists, um, have you found it hard to be able to spread education to the community just because it's like, well, you're a henna artist, you're not a doctor, or you're not an attorney, you're not, you know? Do you see that also? Oh yeah, you hit the nail on the head with regards to that because I mean, locally, a lot of people look at henna artists like, oh, she's just a henna artist, and you know, I can do that. A lot of people say, well, I can do that. You could have just bring it to me. I would have done it for you free of charge. And a lot of people don't understand that being a henna artist is not just about picking up a phone and doing a little something on someone's hand. It's a lot more than that. Our job starts from even acquiring the right materials, the right ingredients to get that product on your skin. And then, I mean, I always tell all my students, pen to paper and phone to, to surface is going to be two different mediums. You can put a pen to a paper and you could write and then the pen at the ballpoint is actually going to do all the work for you. It's going to regulate the amount of ink that comes out from that pen. But the minute you have to squeeze the cone and you have to regulate the amount of paste that comes out while doing a design, it is hella crazy to do that. Right? <laughs> but it, you know, how tough it is to maneuver and to be able to control that paste coming out from that cone. And it, it, it locally, a lot of people frown upon the term henna artist because we've always been looked down on, you know, again, oh, she's just a henna artist or she just do a little something on someone's hand. And this is the whole focus of henna trend. That what we've been doing is that we have been trying to uplift the name of henna artist locally and regionally. Uh, we did this in the sense that last year we did a fundraising 
um, to also commemorate, commemorate the 10th anniversary of Hannah Trinidad. So instead of celebrating, what I did was that the entire team of a henna artist from henna Trinidad, we went to different events and we did henna free of charge. And what we did was that we asked people to give a donation instead of paying for the actual henna. It didn't matter if it was $1, $10, $100, whatever you wanted to contribute. We didn't tell you how much to contribute. You just give something if you wanted to give. And we put that all towards raising funds for a local children's home. and. For henna artists to raise this amount of money, we managed to raise four thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for wow. home locally. Now and that, that was is, one day. Yeah, In no, one day? over a period of two months. So oh, had, okay, not okay. Every, not every single day we would actually go to events. So like every weekend or every other weekend we went to events, and then it climaxed at the Diwali Nagar. What we did is that we got sponsors on board. We got people to. Um, guess the value of a hamper that we had and when I tell you Chelsea this hamper was huge it was a like, huge I can't even show you how big it was because the camera won't be able to show how big it was <laughs> and they came they gave their, their money just you know because it is that they know that it was a, a good for a good a worthy cause and um, $40,300 is let's just say it's maybe about um, between six and 700 US somewhere around there so that is what it is that we were able to raise for the children's home that we identified. And for henna artists to do something like that, it was momentous. It was something that we we, we could have now put on our sleeve and say, you know what, we, we're carrying this badge because we know that we did it and we did it for a good, right reason. And when I got these girls involved, some of them, they were a little hesitant because, you know, when you hear donation, it's like, oh gosh, we have to give money for somebody to something, all right, you know? So a lot mm -hmm. of people they're not they're not inclined to give in of their of their um their treasure then essentially. And uh, we use that as a platform to show people, you know what? Just because we're hen artists doesn't mean that we can't make a difference in a couple of little kids' lives. And this is what it is that we did. And we used it as a way to show people, you know what? We're bigger, we're better than that. And we're not just we're not just here just to do a little something on someone's hand. And uh, the the term hen artist is no longer is it it will no longer be looked down on because of what it is that we have been doing now we have been trying to promote the the term hen artist and we need to be up there just like with the with regards to photographers and decorators and videographers and caterers everybody has their level of respect we demand and we we deserve that now you know are do you read are you a reader yeah, of course. <laughs> so have you ever read, there's a book, it's by Seth Godin. His, it's called This Is Marketing. Have mm -hmm. you ever read that book? No. Nah, if not, you've got to read this book. Because so much of this book you're doing instinctually. And if you took some of the, con like hearing about how, one, like how you're involved in the local community and you're taking this and it's like the give back factor and creating, um, repositioning things so that people are doing them because they've, feel good doing them and they're doing what you wanted them to do anyway like these are things that uh, did you study marketing at all <laughs> this is just oh my gosh um, Lisa, you are a powerhouse yeah because before I started um uh full-time with regards to Hannah Trinidad I I was studying to become an accountant so it had oh my gosh <laughs> you're doing so so well like just here you've got to read this book but i what came to mind just now is this the the concept of us versus them people like us do things like this and um it's something that Seth talks about in this book and it's it's very very it's a powerful message and i see you doing that people like us do things like this henna artists we're not just like again just drawing that little thing on the hand and that's it People like us, we give to our community. People like us, we educate the public. People like us, we're professionals. We care about our branding. We care about customer service. We care about, that is incredible. So you are building your own business and then at the same time, changing the culture of your industry and your region, yeah. which is like, I love it. I'm geeking out. So, <laughs> oh my God. So tell me like for you, how has just just over the course of of your of your career right 
what has been for you, like the, the turning factor that made you go, okay, this is something that this is viable. And yeah, this is great for me to no, I'm, I want to make something bigger than myself because at this point you've, you've created something bigger than yourself. Was that intentional or did it just happen? Uh, I think it was a byproduct of what it is that I'm doing, to be honest. Um, because now I'm in a million years, but I have thought that kind of turn that would have gotten so big. I, it was not my intention to, you know, I, I always thought of myself to be, you know what, I have to be successful, yes. But I didn't think that it would reach this magnitude, to be honest with you. I mean, I even I am mind blown sometimes when it's that I sit and I think about it because I get calls on a really, like, on a really often basis. I mean, more often than not, there would never be a day. And I mean, I'm talking about like days when I'm closed and when, you know, it's like a, a public holiday. My phone will still ring. And <laughs> you're the thing. You're a hot commodity. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't mind. I, I mean, honestly, you know, it, the, the first, you know, the first rule of customer service is that if if you don't see about the customer, somebody else will. And I always keep that in mind, you know. And if it is that it's a Sunday and somebody calls, I mean, I still answer the phone anyhow you take it because regardless, you don't know if it is that Sunday is the only day somebody's, you know, schedule might allow them to actually make a phone call then. Or if it is that they remember, oh, all right, I need to call Helen for that. I need to order this and whatnot. And um, the, the the thing about it is that um, I mean it 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 has been a, a wild ride. I wouldn't lie. It, it's been crazy, and uh, I, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, like, because I I I understand. I understand. Just in oh, I've been in business now. You went full time a year before I did. Yeah. So you actually, you got me beat on the time scale, but I know just over the, the, the length of time that I've been in business, there have been instances where it's like, this is rough and I've got to make a choice. Am I going to invest in some way? Am I going to, um, sacrifice in some way? Am I going to keep putting my face out <laughs> and, and, and being vulnerable or am I just going to be comfortable and stay where I'm at? And obviously you've chosen the former, like, so for you, is there, can you look back over the course of your career and be like, this one investment was a game changer or this one decision was a game changer? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think I could because, um, I not, not to knock my U S suppliers because I'm, I'm still faithful to them and how you take it because you know, if something happens, God forbid should something not take place with regards to my suppliers. I know my U.S. suppliers are still there. But um, I think when it is that I moved from my U.S. suppliers to the actual manufacturers themselves, that was the biggest game changer for me in the sense that my prices, I mean, you've never seen a product on the market where it is that, let's say, for instance, you see it for like 10 U.S. and then the next couple of months lower down your road, you see it for like 6 U.S. Only if it is that you know that you're not going to restock it anymore and you're just trying to get rid of the stock. And I mean, that's mm -hmm. that piece. Yeah. When I started to purchase in bulk, in wholesale amounts, in huge, I mean, by kilos and kilos, that is what changed for me. And I know for a fact that um, when I did that, because it is that the products were, um, were, were up to date because it is that they were fresh because it is that they were um in demand as well too and because it is that they were reasonably priced that's why it is that henna trinidad was like the main go-to place for henna body art products and supplies for artists and enthusiasts locally and uh, that that was the part when it is that you know i, I know for a fact okay well yeah this could work for me and i think it was a good decision that i made um I still have a couple of U.S. suppliers that I still purchase from any hair ticket. I'm going to remain loyal to them because they have been loyal to me, obviously. And, um, you know, there are a couple of U.S. suppliers who started me off with regards to, you know, providing me with, you know, the best products so that when it is that I went, you know, to the actual manufacturers, I compared it to and I said, you know what, okay, this is a good product compared to what it is that I got from my U.S. supplier. And that's when it is that I started to, to move forward. Um, I think because no, I, I, I haven't just stuck to just henna body art supplies alone, but because it is that I've expanded by introducing, um, you know, the henna for the hair, 
and the Ayurvedic powders for the hair as well too, and then the Jago products. I think that is what really helped with my business, you know, to, to, to be different from the rest and to be bigger and better because of the variety that I have actually had. And it, it has been crazy to be able to manage every single one. Because, you know, one minute you have someone wanting the Jaguar products and then another minute you want, you have someone else who wants to carry the hairline and then you have somebody else who wants to do the henna body art products and stuff. And I mean, little me has, has been trying to juggle all of this and it feels, it, it's overwhelming at times, but I know for a fact I just have to pace myself and I just have to take my time and do what it is that I need to do and everything will get done. So basically that has been a game changer for me. When I decided to move from the small amounts to the really big amounts, that is what really helps, you know, kind of turn that take off. Mm, that's that's huge. I think that sometimes we 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 look small because not because we're not thinking big, but the, we literally don't uh so you know the term like you can't see the forest for the trees. We're yeah. so in it that like we just can't consider outside. So for you to say like like look and be like yeah, I'm not going to just order for myself. I'm going to go wholesale. And I'm going to go big. Uh, that's a huge. That's a huge transition. That is so, so cool. So let me ask you, what has been like for you, personal, professional, whatever, what has been your biggest lesson that you've learned in over the course of this journey? Like, because this sounds incredible. I can't imagine there have been so many highs and lows and crazy moments and challenges and, and extraordinary wins. What, and I know it's probably going to be hard to find just one, but what is one of like your, your, the biggest lesson that you've learned over, over this time? It's taken me 11 years to reach here. So the biggest lesson is to be patient. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they have a saying, Rome was not built in a day. And mm -hmm. I take that literally because Kenneth Renard was definitely not built in a day. And a lot of people, you see, I think this goes with any single decision, career decision that you make, whether it's that you're a doctor, a lawyer, a nail tech, a hairstylist, a caterer, it doesn't matter. Whatever field you're in, you will always have your haters. And you'll always have people who are trying to pull you down or trying to just not, they, they don't like the fact that you're succeeding. And a lot of them don't realize that this was not done overnight because it's a lot of sacrifice. And when I tell you a lot of sacrifice, Chelsea, I went almost five years without buying a brand new jean for myself. You know what mm. it is to buy a pair of jeans for five whole years? I, <laughs> mm, I can't imagine. Like, I, I would have withdrawals. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that is the, the level of sacrifice that I made for my business. And a lot of people think that, you know, maybe she got a handout from my mom and dad, but no, they didn't help me financially. I didn't ask them. And even if it is that they offered, I told them, I said, no, I want to do this on my own. I need to, to be able to be successful on my own. Let me do it and let me put my own self in my own debt so that you all don't have anything to, 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 to pay off. Let me be the one to do it. And it's, it's taken me 11 years, 11 long, hard, treacherous years of a lot of sacrifices, a lot of failures along the way, a lot of, oh my God, I wonder if it is and I'm going to make it. Am I going to make it? Is this a good investment? You know, questioning and, you know, sometimes self-doubting yourself. But what I've also learned is that I need to have faith in myself. I need to have faith in my business, in my, in my abilities. And... Uh, I, I need to push myself as well too and uh, I think it's that that is what it is that a lot of people have found when it is that they they, they scope me out with regards to you know wanting to do a TV interview or a newspaper um, article or a magazine ad or something that's what it is that they see when it is that they they, 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 they choose me to come and you know do a feature on because of my I'm, I'm not just a and not just because of my bubbly personality, but because they know that it wasn't something easy to over to, to, to do. And a couple of my friends, they always tell me, they say, you know, Risa, if it is that I've never told you this before, I'm telling you it now. I'm very proud of you because you took something that was never a business that did not even have a hint of success in Trinidad. And you made it into a successful business for yourself. And you've been helping out 
so many henna artists in your journey with regards to you know building your brand building your according to you you know your empire and you know building something that you can actually pass on to your kids and you know i i'm, I'm really proud when it is that i think about all the progress that i've made and i know um i've i've been very patient with it i have i have never given up and you know even when things got rough even when it's in the look at your bank account and you're like you know <laughs> yeah that's real that's real <laughs> yeah. and a lot of people don't understand you know henna artists don't make a lot especially locally and let's say for instance in the US uh, you might charge for a very small little little design maybe 5 US right and the equivalent of that down here is just about 30 TT if we charge for something really small on the hand for 30 TT trust me we are going to get our eyes poked out by our customers <laughs> They'll take the cone. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no. you're, you're, you're cheating me here because you know what, what you're doing for me here is not is not worth the money that I'm giving to you. But you know we we have had to buckle under the pressure, and what I have done is that I've slowly tried to bring um, value to our artwork, and it's getting there. And very soon, I know we're gonna we're gonna meet the same. Um, standard that the U.S. has um, placed with regards to you know charging for uh, henna designs. Even when it is that we have um, visitors, when we have uh, people visiting from the U.S. and the Can and Canada, when they come down here, they'll be like, "Oh my God, this is so cheap!" Because when they go back, oh, no. I mean, no, 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 not, not, not it's this just, of it's not. just the conversion. I like. <laughs> But it makes you crazy. Like I would, I could, I cannot imagine like the resilience that it would have to take to sit there and hear that all day and know in the back of your mind, I'm changing it. I'm changing it. I'm changing yeah. it. Like that has to take some mental fortitude. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. I mean, yeah, you have to have the willpower. You have to have. Um, <laughs> forgive me, but I have to use this. I my I, I remember hearing it from a very insp inspirational um young lady. You have to have the testicular fortitude in order to be able to do these things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because if if you're not if you're not strong enough, if you're not, you know, if your backbone is not strong enough to take it, you're gonna break. That's the thing, you are going to break and Kenna artists locally, they have not been able to get a footing. Um, and when it is, I, I, I am taking, I, I don't care who says what, I am taking full credit for henna being revolutionized in Trinidad and Tobago. Hey. Because of my business, because of what it is that we are offering now, this is why it is that henna artists are actually able to move forward and give, you know, really good designs and really good stains and all these different things because of the opportunities we have given to them because of the products and supplies that they have readily available at their fingertips now. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's an amazing accomplishment. Like that's incredible. I'm it's hard to give me speechless. Like you that is incredible. I love that so much. Risa, let me ask you this. If you were to to take if you were to leave a message in a bottle, right? If you were to leave a piece of advice or a suggestion for the henna artist who's coming up two steps behind you, they're two steps behind you in their journey. What would you say to them on how to move forward? There are a couple of things that I would say to them. One, um, when it comes to customer service, you have to be top. You can't, you can't slack off with customer service. Remember, especially if it is that you're doing a bride, for instance, you're going to be sitting down with that bride there for maybe anywhere between two to six hours. If you don't share a word or two on exchange with that bride, you're going to have that bride in a very uncomfortable position. Customer service is key in our industry. Remember, it's a service that we provide. So you have to put customer interest, customer service at the top. Always have your customer's interest at your best intentions. It has to be there. Another thing too is that you need to be patient as well too. As I said before, and I'm going to say it again, Rome was not built in a day. Everything takes time. And as you start to progress, you're going to see it. Um, another thing too, you have to remain humble at 
any given point in time, you have to remain humble. You may become the very best, neatest, fastest, most awesome henna artist locally or anywhere in the world. If you're not humble, you're not going to make it. As far as I'm concerned, I've seen people who have made it to the top and because it is that it was just way too up in the air, they were not watching where they were walking and they stumbled and they fell. So you always have to remain humble and remember your roots, remember where you came from, remember the people who put you up on that pedestal. Because the people who put you there, it's very easy for them to pull you back down as well too. And social media, I mean, I had a rant on social media earlier this morning and it is something that is rampant now. If you ill treat a client, that is gonna go viral so fast, you would not believe it. So it ties back to my very first thing. You have to, you know, your customer service is is tops. And also too, the best piece of advice that I could give, take all the advice that you could all get you could possibly get. Whether it's from someone who now started or somebody who is seasoned in the henna industry, because any advice is good advice. You can actually use it to your discretion. If it's not good advice, you could still take it to say, you know, well, okay, if this person is saying this, I don't really agree with it, but I'll keep it at the back of my mind. But the advice that you get, take it because a lot of people don't give advice freely then. They don't give, you know, the, the advice that you really need. And my, my, my thing is that with regards to Hannah Trinidad, I always say with regards to any henna artist that comes to me, if you are willing to learn, I am more than willing to teach. Right? So, but if it is that's that you good. one day thing and then want to shoot off as a henna artist and you want to make it right then and there, I can't mm. help you. With that. But there are steps that you need to take in order to get where where you want to be. And it goes with anything, any career, any any decision that you make in your life. You have to be patient. You have to. And another thing, you have to not, don't ever give up. Because there were times where it is that I said to myself, you know what, this just does, it does not make sense because I'm fighting. And then, you know, the chemical phones were taken over at that point in time and everybody kept saying, well, no, nothing happened to me and nothing ever happened to my clients. And I keep saying, not yet, not yet. And when it does happen, you will regret it. And then you would say, you know what, I should have listened to when it is that Risa told me about it. And... Don't, like I said, don't ever give up. Keep keep pushing yourself. Keep, you know, progressing. You know, things are going to get there one day. Don't worry about it. It is going to get there one day. And, I mean, like I said, the advice, keep taking all the advice that you can get, you know, even if it is that you might think, you know what, that's really dumb advice. So smile. <laughs> and smile. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's about it. Yeah. That is such a good, that's such a good advice. I like, I love you, Risa. I like, we're going to be besties. Like, this is, oh my gosh. So I, I have to tell you, like, I'm so thankful for you to come up and, and spend your time with me and like, to share your journey, to share your, your insight and, and what it took you to get there. And then like pulling back that curtain for us. Let me ask you one, where can people find you on social media? All right, so Hannah Trinidad is available on Facebook, so you can search for us on Facebook at Hannah Trinidad. Uh -huh. um, we're available on Instagram as well, too, um, at Hannah Trinidad. Um, you can get us on email as well, too. Our email address is hannah.trinidad at gmail.com. Awesome. And then, so obviously, because everyone's going to want to follow you. I'm like, clearly, everyone's going to want to follow you. But also, <laughs> I want to ask, like, because, you know, for me, I, I, I built Hennapreneur with the intention of helping people. And yeah. I want to help us. I want to help artists to build the thing that they're doing. How can the Hennapreneur community help you and help Henna Trinidad right now? Um, well, it's not just about helping me, but it's about helping our local Henna artists as well. Um, what we're going to do is that um, we, we, we want to start promoting natural henna locally and we want to push for natural henna more than anything else right now and we want to use henna preneur as a, a place that local henna artists can go to to get the information that they need right and to get to get insight on how it is that they can build their own you know entrepreneur their, their own business how to be successful as well too because not only my story but i'm pretty sure there's a couple of other stories that you're going to get 
that a lot of people are going to be inspired by as well too. And not just the advice from me, but you'll get advice from other hen artists. You'll get a lot of insight as well, um, a lot of intel, a lot of tips and tricks, a lot of secrets as well too. So this is how it is that Hennapreneur can help us, not just my business alone, but the whole of the Hannah community locally and regionally as well too. So what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to stream out from the top of the mountain and let everybody know, hey, you guys need to follow <laughs> Hennapreneur on Facebook, on Instagram, go to their website, check out, they have a lot of valuable information, um, sign up and get all their, subscribe to their mailing list and stuff because I mean, you have a wealth of knowledge as well too under your belt too. And I, you, you know, when it is that I started doing henna um, a good couple of years ago, we had um, people who were, they're not locals. They were from um, other, other countries and they came here and they were doing the henna. And when I, when I approached them, asking them for advice, I got shut down. Wow. Like, they told me, they said, no, I can't help you. And I'm like, well, all right, no problem. So mm. I use that as fuel for my fire to do what I am doing today. So I don't, I don't want henna artists to go through all the trouble that I went through, you know, and you know Same. face the disappointments that we that I that I faced when I started, you know, trying to get my foot wet in yeah. the henna. And I I always think back to that day when it is that I made those phone calls and you know Chelsea it's not something that you know you would you would like to relive it's not something that a lot of people you know um it, they they don't tolerate it very well you know they, they shoot down and you know they say no 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 I'm not gonna help you because it is that they wanted to they they wanted to own the 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 henna business here locally but locals have taken it back from them you know because um it it it's a it's a tad bit of selfishness yes but um at the same time you're coming here with a wealth of knowledge and you don't mm -hmm. want to share it with us but what we did is that we we did our research and we reached out to the, the, the various facebook forums that they have all over i mean thanks to every single one of them they have like a ton of different facebook um groups all over that help us locals as well too and uh, because of that, that's why it is that we've basically taken back the business and we're like moving forward with it now. So, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. I love that. I love that you're also pushing to, to, to empower others and empower other henna artists. That's, that's the the move behind Hennapreneur. And so I love that we're in alignment there. I know that you recently launched a line of Jaguar products. So I want to be sure also to like, hey, guys, if you didn't know, here's a little way that you can also support Hannah Trinidad like she's offering Jaguar products for like, hello, in, in the Caribbean, in Trinidad and Tobago, and then in the Caribbean as well. So yeah. if, uh, that's a thing. We have our own line of uh, Jaguar juice and Jaguar products as well too. Ah. So if you need to get like fresh Jaguar juice, we also have available, you know, Jaguar juice ready for you. Um, it's it's a it's a product that we're very proud of as well too and we know for a fact it's it's a hundred percent fresh for sure for sure for sure for sure and um we we ship locally regionally and also internationally so if it is that you need to get um your jaguar juice i mean what we could do is that we could probably offer a little something as well too um when it is that you place your order for your jaguar juice through henna trinidad just mention that how it is that you saw um the offer here at henna Preneur. And we'll give you a, a, a nice little discount for sure. I love that. Oh, yeah. that's so exciting. We're going to have a coupon code for Hannahpreneur. Yes! <laughs> oh, my gosh. A code and everything for you. So definitely Hannahpreneur is going to be, you know, with the compliments of having Hannahpreneur, guys, <laughs> it's at the discounted price. And we have, we have the juice at the lowest price possible we don't have nowhere else can compare to our prices absolutely nowhere no way you are so fun i just love you so much oh my gosh well Risa, thank you thank you again so much for for coming and for sharing your expertise with us and i cannot wait cannot wait to see what's what's coming next for henna trinidad like <laughs> The trajectory is just so hot. I am so proud of you and for you. And I hope that you feel the same as well. Like you should. <laughs>
Well, I mean, I like I said, I mean, I, I try to stay as humble as I possibly can. I mean, a lot of people don't think that, but it's it's built into me to remain humble and to remain, you know, on the same plane field like everyone else. I mean, nobody is better than anybody. Everybody has their different skills, has their abilities, you know, has their capabilities and stuff. But as far as I'm concerned, you're a hen artist, I am a hen artist, and we both love the exact same thing. And there's no difference to that. The passion is still there, you know, the, the, the vibe is still there, the love is still there. Yeah. And I mean, you're more invested in it than I am. And I see that clearly. I mean, your dedication is so fast. And I, I wish I could be as dedicated to it as you are to, to sit down and draft out all these different things and, you know, have this wealth of knowledge at a click for all henna artists to be able to get. I mean, it's, it's something that is very hard to come by. And, um, you know, I, I am I am really happy to have been featured here. I'm 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 stoked actually. I'm just like you, I'm geeking out. <laughs> I, I'm I'm really I'm really glad that I, I can actually bring my country forward and people will know where where Trinidad and Tobago is, what Trinidad and Tobago is about. It's the land of, of Calypso and you know Soka and um trop, it's a tropical paradise. We have awesome beaches. We have, I mean, you, you should know about Carnival. We have Carnival. Mm-hmm. It was days for the year that, that rocked this entire nation. And, and thanks to you, you have henna. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's yes, the big one. Like, you, you have all those things. The beaches are great, but Risa, <laughs> thanks to you, there's, there's henna Trinidad. So, oh my gosh. I love it so, so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Kelsey, this is, this is really a, an, an awesome thing. And um, from henna artists locally to you, thank you so much for giving us the platform where it is that we can be heard, we can be seen, and we can be pushed forward as well too. I mean, keep up the good work. Um, I I don't know what else to say, Gil. I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm speechless right now. You know, to be featured here, it's it's like a dream come true to be honest. Oh my gosh! Well, I'm sure that it won't be the last time that we that we chat. I'm sure. Oh, that we're gonna be best buddies from now. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. All right, love. Will you enjoy the rest of your day? Thank you again so much, and I am so looking forward to to seeing what comes next. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. <laughs>